Hello? Is this thing on? <laughs> I updated my recording software this morning, and to be honest with you, it destroyed all of my settings. I know, dude. Listen, I like woke up. I thought I was going to record a video this morning. I, I pulled up OBS, and then all of a sudden, pacoom! Everything was broken. It Wow, you really don't care about my story. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to All The Mod 7 to the sky. <laughs> and I have been busy off camera doing some saving, which by the way, you guys pointed out that this isn't, this isn't called saving, it's called sieving, but you know what? I'm, I'm not the smartest anyway, so you know what? Sieving it is, sieving it is. <laughs> but as you can see, I actually got my meshes upgraded from the iron meshes that we ended off with in the last episode, all the way up to emerald. So if we go ahead and check out our quest book here, and we go into the getting started section, we can see we went from iron to diamond, which by the way, took me an insane amount of diamonds in order to do all of this, all the way up to emerald, which is actually the last upgrade that I can do for right now, because the next one is the final mesh, which is a netherite mesh. And I don't know how to get netherite at the moment. I mean, I do, kind of. I have to get to netherite scrap, but in order to get to netherite scrap, I have to sieve crushed netherrack. And to get crushed netherrack, I have to get netherrack. And to get netherrack, I have to do some automation with a barrel and some lava. And it it's going to be a whole thing. I don't want to do that today. <laughs> that is not the path that I want to take today. Instead, I think I would rather get into some power. And our first power source that we can make is the coal generator. So, you know what? I say we just go ahead and we get right into it. Let's go ahead and look up the coal gen. And I believe this is a pretty simple, a pretty simple craft. It's just some iron, some gold, and some blue dye. That sounds easy enough. Also, I have made a few changes around here. I have myself my gold furnaces now, done some upgrades there. Also continuously have my iron furnaces as well. Just set those guys over here. And then I also have set up some drawers for some of the items that we have. And this guy, this is a crystal chest. I basically upgraded a regular chest over and over again until we have a crystal chest and I was able to store some of my items here. And as you can see, I have been sieving. <laughs> see, I'm correcting myself, guys. I've been sieving a lot of materials. So we're looking pretty good for iron for right now. I also have some stuff that needs to be smelted up, but uh, we'll do that a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and grab out some iron. Let's grab out some gold. And let's grab out some lapis because we are going to need some blue dye. And then should be just a matter of getting some gold nuggets. And bada bing, bada boom, there's a machine frame. And now I'm going to need coal, redstone, and that should be it. So coal should be easy enough. The redstone, I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure I don't have any redstone. I don't. Will you go away, my dude? You're constantly in my way. Do you have anything, anything that you're trading that I absolutely need? No, no, you're not even that useful to me. Go away, go away, off the island, off the island. You as well, follow him, follow him. Ooh, a lead, follow him. Okay, beautiful. All right, eight dust. Let's see, can I get one redstone, please? Huh, huh, ha ha, redstone. I am so good at this game. Also, unnatural. What is that? Uh, create Fluix Dust. I mean, I didn't create anything, but you know what? I will take it. I will take it. Go ahead and put all of that into the chest. And now I just need to get myself a couple of sticks and stuff, which I should be able to do a little bit like this. And then two of those, two of those, and now a coal generator. Bada bing, bada boom. Another quest complete. Now this guy... I think it's actually pretty easy to use. And I also made this other platform here. I just kind of expanded out with some cobblestone so we have some more room to work. Now this guy, I think is like super simple. You just put coal in and bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, starts making power. Easy enough. Ha <laughs> ha, our very first power in the pack. And the entire reason that I did that Easy redstone. Easy redstone and another quest completed. <laughs> now, another thing that I do want to mention is that I've basically finished off everything on this page except for the farming, the soul sand, the mesh that we already talked about, 
And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Just soul sand and the mesh. And, oh, and the farming. The farming over here. So, everything else is completed. I also went ahead and upgraded our cobble gin all the way up to tier 5. And I have that guy sitting over here still making cobblestone into this oak drawer. So, that is working out perfectly. So... I think the next thing that we want to do is start automating some things. We have our beginning source of power, but it's probably better for us to go ahead and upgrade to even better power. So let's go ahead and check out Getting Started Part 2. We'll go ahead and check that out, get some experience, and let's go into Getting Started Part 2 and see what we got. So it looks like uh, basic power... You should have a coal generator ready to go. I do! I do indeed! Let's go ahead and go ahead and check that off. Let's see. Using our power to create more power. Now that, that sounds good. Let's make a metallurgic infuser. This machine allows us to make several materials that can be used for power and more machines in the future. Place the infuser beside the coal generator to give it power. Okay, metallurgic infuser. How hard is this? Osmium, which I already have a bit of. I have iron, I have redstone, and I have furnaces. This should be... This should be pretty easy to make. Alrighty, and just like that, metallurgic infuser. Nice and easy. Let's go ahead and let's sit this next to our coal generator. And I believe this guy should get power if... Let's see. How do I... Uh-oh. Well, that ain't what I wanted to do. <laughs> How do I output power to this guy? Uh, do I have to input power from somewhere? Side configuration? Aha! Energy. And let's... Uh, yes. Input from the left. It is dark. <laughs> Hold on, let me sleep. Oh! Um... Uh... <laughs> Hello! How are you guys doing, Mr. Creeper and Spider? Um, I I do not have a weapon. This this could get a little bit a little bit dicey. Let's get ourselves a sword. Come here, boys. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Why do you guys have a weird texture? Ooh, please don't blow up my stuff. Please don't blow up my stuff. Go! Oh! Okay, you're good. You only broke one piece. All right, we're good. I can take that. There we go. Now you, spider, I need you to get off of my platform. Goodbye. <laughs> All righty, well, that was easy enough for the metallurgic infuser. Let's go ahead and grab up the infused alloy and some experience. And it looks like I should be able to make a wind generator here. So... Let's see what we got. We need some infused alloy. We need energy tablet and actually we need two energy tablets and a basic control unit. Ho ho ho. Okay, this is actually not that bad. Actually not that bad. So we need redstone and we need some iron. Oh man, I need to start uh, sieving some redstone. Look at this. Look at this. I'm learning. I'm learning English. Alrighty, so I'm not entirely sure how this metallurgic infuser works, but I think it's just four iron in there, and then four redstone dust in there. And I think, hopefully, that should give me at least one of these infused alloys that I need. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it is going to be ten millibuckets of redstone to one ingot. So that is perfect, and that should give us enough for completing this quest off because we need five of those now these energy tablets and the basic control circuit basic control circuit is once again going to be redstone and then just some osmium okay i have osmium already cooking up so that should be pretty easy uh energy tablets what are these more infused alloy some gold and redstone okay so i'm gonna need uh four more of those infused alloy apart from what we already had so I think, or maybe, is this going to complete that already for us? Yeah, so maybe we're already good. Let's go ahead and just make these energy tablets, and then if I need to make more of this infused alloy, then we can. Alrighty, so two energy tablets now created. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and see what else I need. Just the basic control circuit now. So let's go ahead and grab some osmium out of here, and then I already have redstone in my inventory, so this should be... 
a pretty easy craft as well. Uh, just one piece of dust. Is that right? Nope. Two pieces of dust. There we go. Okay, so this one's going to take double the redstone, but that is not a problem. I actually like how this quest book is kind of helping me along with this because I'm actually... I don't think I've played with mechanism in a long time, so I'm kind of, you know, kind of a noob. Kind of a noob when it comes to mechanism, but there we go. Give me some osmium, and now looks like uh, connecting power... Uh, sticking with mechanism leads to creating an ore factory. Ooh, that sounds good. But how do I make the wind generator? Where is... Where is wind generator part two? <laughs> it says wind generator part one. I don't know where wind generator part two is, though. Let's see. Let's go ahead and see if we do wind. Wind generator. Ah! Oh, that's easy. It's just the energy... To oh, <laughs> that, that, my friends, that is wind. That is, oh, uh, okay. I don't think I was supposed to do it like that. Uh, how do I pick this thing up? Yeah, I can just pick it up with this. Cool. Okay. And now, boom, there we go. The port is going into the thingy. And I think this guy has unlimited power now. How much does this actually produce? Uh... Okay, that's actually not that bad. 384 FE per tick? Huh, I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. That's that's not... That's not horrible. Alrighty, so it looks like the next thing that I need to do is basically make this big battery, which is a basic energy cube. This seems like something that's going to be pretty useful, to be honest with you. So, if we go ahead and check this out, though... It's going to take some more of those energy tablets, which obviously isn't too bad. However, we also have a new thing thrown at us, and that is a steel casing, which is going to require steel. Now, in order to get steel, there's a couple of ways to do it, but probably the easiest is going to be with steel dust. Because we already have the metallurgic infuser here, what I can do is just make some enriched iron and then put coal with enriched iron. Now, enriched iron is easy to make because it's just iron and then coal. So, you basically just run the iron through twice and that's it. So, we're going to put iron into here, which I don't actually think I need that much iron in there. Let's just do 16 and then we'll do some coal into here. And that should go ahead and make us some enriched iron dust. Then, I can take that enriched iron dust, put it back into here... And then run it back through and we'll get steel dust. So, should be a pretty simple process. We just gotta wait for this thing to actually be done. Alrighty, and now I have my enriched iron in here with some more coal. And we are getting out steel dust. Nice and easy. Now I can just smelt this up and we can get ourselves some steel ingots. Nice. Alrighty, so to make this energy cube, we first need this steel casing. Which is pretty simple. Some glass, osmium, and steel. Not too bad, and then we need some more of these energy tablets, which I think I should be able to make both of them. Perfect. And now, bada bing, bada boom, basic energy cube. Now, I think that this guy can just be hooked up directly to this windmill here, and it'll act as a big battery for us. So, I think I can do something like this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this thing is storing up. And this guy is draining out. Goodness. Okay. All right. So this actually doesn't hold that much energy either. And it looks like, yeah, we're outputting 46.4 FE per tick. Okay. And this thing is very slowly going up. Oh, no. That's not even 46 FE per tick. What is this? It says power 46.4. Oh, that must be its internal buffer. That's how much it always keeps in itself. And then it's outputting this. Okay, so it's still 384 FE per tick. Okay. I'm assuming. Yes, because this is measuring kilo FE per tick. Okay, or kilo FE. So, yeah, that's about right. Oh, wow. This is actually going to store quite a bit of energy for us then. Perfect. Well, as fun as that was to play around with the Metallurgic Infuser, I actually want to start some automation, starting with the sieves, because these guys, they're kind of a pain. I'm not going to lie, they're kind of a pain, but luckily, the mod pack actually walks us through 
kind of a way in order to automate the sieving process and that is with this here we have the flux sieve and the flux hammer so this is what i want to get to today i want to try and automate as much of the sieving process as possible that's going to be my main goal and i think we're just going to follow right along with the quest book for right now and start with a magmatic dynamo now I'm not entirely sure how easy this is going to be, but we will see because we need Invar. And Invar is actually something that has to be created. So if we go ahead and we look up Invar in here, we have to make this by combining iron and nickel, which we can get from sieving. So I actually have some iron and nickel already. Let's see. So this is nickel and then iron, obviously, we have... We have plenty of iron. So I think I just need to smelt up the nickel into a processed form. And then after that, I should be able to break it down with a hammer. So if I look up the hammer, we should have, yes, these ore hammers. Now these are a little bit expensive, but let's go ahead and make us an iron one. Probably there probably is a cheaper one somewhere. Uh, looks like copper. Maybe? Uh, maybe not. Okay, anyway, let's just go ahead and let's make one of these. We'll go ahead and get some sticks made up, just because I'm sure we're going to need them for crafting. And there we go. We have an iron ore hammer. Now what I do is I take iron, and I can just make a bunch of this. So let's go ahead and just make, let's say, 12. There we go. Perfect. And now all I need is some nickel. And we'll put the nickel in here once again with the ore hammer. And there we go. Now we just do this and this. There we go. Invar blend. Now with the Invar, we can go ahead and smelt this into some Invar ingots. Perfect. So that is our road into Invar. And that should get us a little bit closer to making this magmatic dynamo. Redstone, gold. Is there anything else that I need? Uh, just Invar. Yeah, I think Invar was our biggest blocker. So once this is done smelting up, we should be able to make at least one magmatic dynamo. So we need one of these redstone flux coils. We also are going to need an Invar gear. So we're going to need a little bit more of this stuff here. So there we go. Invar gear is made. And then just redstone iron. Pretty simple magmatic dynamo. Now this guy... This guy's actually pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think that it has a super complicated interface here. I think all we do is we import lava into this guy and it will start making power. So if I go ahead and take just like a bucket and do this. Yeah, there we go. It's going to start outputting into its own little buffer here. Now, can I pick this thing up and not lose the power? I actually don't know that so this is a thermal expansion mod let's go ahead and see if we go ahead and grab that uh i think we need the thermal expansion wrench in order to pick this thing up so thermal let's just look up wrench because that's what it should be uh thermal expansion wrench i thought it was this blue wrench but maybe Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, that's right. I forgot. The thermal expansion mod actually calls it a crescent hammer. So this is once again, pretty easy. Iron, iron gear. That's going to be super, super easy to make. So iron gear, which means we need an iron nugget for whatever reason. And there we go. No, not iron frames. Why did you make iron frames? There we go. Iron gear and then a crescent hammer. Now this guy... There we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so like I've said, I actually want to try and get a good amount of the sieving process automated in today's episode. So this area over here, I want to be gravel sieving. This area, I want to be sand. And this area, I want to be dust. So we got a little bit of work to do here, but I think the automation process is going to be pretty simple. So first off, we have the cobble generator that is just storing some cobblestone in an oak drawer and then I have that oak drawer set up to output 
some of the cobblestone into this crucible here, making lava, and then that is using fluid pipes from the pipes mod in order to give fuel to our magmatic dynamo. So this is basically our very simple power setup, and I'm going to have one for each one of these modules. Now let's go ahead and head back over to the main island, and let's make some of the sieves. So I have one sieve made and I need a couple of hammers. So let's go ahead and make at least one of those. And I'm going to need more sieves as well. Let's go ahead and I'm going to break these guys down like this because I'm going to need at least three of these guys. Uh, and I guess I'll just take the emerald mesh out of this dude. So there we go. And let's go ahead and make, can I make two more of these? Yes, okay, two more of those. And then for hammer, we're going to need one for gravel and then two for gravel and sand and then three for gravel, sand, and dust. So uh, let's just make however many we can. Oh, I can only make one. What am I missing? Uh, let's see. I am missing iron blocks. Okay, that's easy enough. Got those in my inventory here. There we go. Three more. Okay, so that'll give me... I have... To gravel, then I have gravel to sand, and so I would need three more flux hammers in order to get to dust, I believe. So, you know what? Let's just get one of these set up. Let's make sure that this actually works. So we'll start off by setting up gravel, and my idea here is to just use an item pipe coming out of our cobblestone drawer into a flux hammer, and then from the flux hammer go directly into the flux sieve and I'm not entirely sure that this is going to work like this but let's give it a shot we just need to provide a little bit of power to both of these guys and hopefully uh we're gonna have to do pipes mod right oh no this says this says work progress do I not have to hit this with this uh let's see can I right click it says it has no RF stored. Interesting. But it is working. Huh. Okay. No, I, I tell you what. Let's just... Can I right click and let's see what this does? Okay, we have cobblestone. And are we getting any... We are not. We are not getting any gravel over here. That is a problem. Interesting. Okay, I'm not entirely sure why this isn't why this isn't filling up with flux right now. Oh, is it because do I have to do this? Is that what we're missing? And then these are probably set as inputs right now. So let's go ahead and break these. There we go. Now let's see what happens. There we go. Okay, redstone flux is going in. Perfect. And now we should be getting gravel here. And then once this is done, obviously we have to put a mesh in here still. So can I just, is it there? Okay, perfect. So now that should work theoretically. And then I think I can just pipe items out of here. However, I want to set up some type of filter. Does the pipes mod have a filter? Okay, so the Pipes mod does actually have a filter. We have to upgrade it all the way to the advanced pipe upgrade though, which it is actually a little bit expensive to do so, but it's not, it's not absolutely horrible. And as we get more and more automated, it, it's not too bad. The biggest issue right now is blocks of redstone. That's, that's something that I don't have a lot of because I just haven't sieved a ton of dust. So that one's kind of a pain. The diamond is from sieving gravel, which I now have set up and it is actually working. So this is the complete system. We have the cobble. We have the items going into the hammer, the hammer going directly into the sieve. And then this actually has to output into something below it, an inventory below it. So it can't go directly into the pipe. It has to go into a chest first. But as you can see, this thing is working. Uh, yeah, there you go. You saw some items come through just there and it's immediately going into this web of item pipes, which yes, I know this isn't the most efficient. <laughs> what would actually be better is to replace one of these drawers with a drawer controller and then have that drawer controller linked to all of the drawers. The problem is 
I don't have nether quartz right now in order to do that. So for right now, this is what we're going to do just so we can get things automated. And then once we have quartz automated as well, we'll go ahead and redo this slightly. But that is it. That is this thing done. Now what I want to work on is actually upgrading these guys because they do have upgrade slots. And if we go ahead and just do at EX, you can see that we have gold upgrades, which we need cyan terracotta and green dye. Now cyan terracotta, cyan is actually pretty easy to get. You can just get it from the appetite, which we have a ton of. Uh, the terracotta, however, this one may be a little bit trickier. We're probably going to have to go with clay for right now. Uh, make clay, smelt it up. That'll probably be our best option. And then later we'll have to find another way to actually make uh, clay or terracotta one of the two. But this should be pretty simple. Then we got glass and then green dye. Green dye is going to be a problem because I do not have cactus. However, I do have some cactus seeds and I also have snad. Snad is another mod that is here in the mod pack and it allows things to grow very, very fast whenever placed on it. So hopefully this cactus will grow pretty quick. Also, I'm pretty sure there's no growth limit in this pack. So I think that this can grow to like, you know, max world height. Alrighty, so it has been a few minutes, but this is now completely set up for sieving gravel. And it actually ended up getting a little bit more complicated than I originally thought with four magmatic dynamos needed in order to power these two machines with gold upgrade threes. That is pretty intense. I mean, it makes sense because this is 64 RF per tick as well as this is 64 RF per tick. So it is quite costly to be honest with you to run just these two machines. So six magmatic dynamos, that's just, that's a lot, but that is nothing compared to our other two setups. This guy is our sand sieve and it has two hammers with gold upgrades as well as the sieve with three gold upgrades and this guy takes six <laughs> he takes six magmatic dynamos in order to keep up with the power needed so this guy it's kind of intense it's kind of intense i also have a new block under there that we're going to talk about here in just a second that if we did not have this system would not work but we'll talk about that in just a second but this guy is working. All of the stuff is going into the front drawers. All of the items are slowly starting to filter in here. I think once we get the netherite mesh, we also get access to a couple more items from sieving sand. So this is not the final stage of this, I don't believe. And then last but not least, we have the sieve set up for dust. And as you can see, it's working great. But this, this is the beefy boy. It takes eight magmatic dynamos in order to get it to work as well as two superheating elements so superheating elements are from mechanism and they give off a heat rating of 60 so if you look at the top left you can see at the very bottom heat of 60 where we were using uranium blocks and that only gives off a heat of 20 so it is a huge upgrade and allows us to keep enough lava in these two crucibles to power all eight of these magmatic dynamos so without that these guys would not be able to run and it's still barely keeping up because each one of these has three gold upgrades in it so all three of these are doing eight items at a time eight gravel from the first machine eight sand from the second machine and eight dust from this machine and all of it is filling up nicely however we do have a problem we do have a problem with this storage system rather than the uh, controller issue that i already told you guys about earlier we also have an issue of overflow so right now let's say that we have an issue with flint right flint this is completely full right now and Normally, what would happen is it would try and flow to another inventory, say this drawer up here. But what happens if this drawer is full and this drawer is full? That is where void upgrades come in. Any additional item should be voided so that your entire system doesn't stop working just because one item 
is full. So let's say that, for instance, Flint is full. This sieve is going to stop working whenever it doesn't have anywhere in this chest to output to. And this indicator here will say inventory is full. So I would have my entire system clogged up and not working if it wasn't for these void upgrades. However, at the moment, they're a little bit expensive because of one item, obsidian. Obsidian, I do not have any method to get right now. So that's what I want to work on next. I want to work on getting some type of obsidian set up so that we can get void upgrades for all of our drawers here. That way we're not, you know, having any overflow issues. Okay, so to set up obsidian generation, I have a couple of options. Option number one, the Philosopher's Stone. The Philosopher's Stone is great, and it's a pretty cheap item to make. If we go ahead and just look this guy up, he's not too terribly bad to craft. He's just some gunpowder, some blaze powder, and a gold ingot. And he allows us to make obsidian by holding shift and right-clicking lava. Absolutely perfect. Then we can just mine it up with our diamond pickaxe. However, this isn't very automated and it's kind of slow because I keep having to go and refill buckets every time that I want obsidian. So this isn't the solution I want to go for. Instead, I would rather go for this recipe here, which is the blast chiller recipe. However, the blast chiller does have one problem and that is packed ice. I don't have a way to get ice right now because I don't have silk touch. I can, however, get ice in my world. Actually, I can do that pretty easily. All I have to do is get some water and once again with the philosopher's stone, boom, I have myself ice. However, I can't pick this up because I don't have silk touch. So <laughs> that's our next goal. Okay, so I'm going to try something in order to get ice that has to do with a mod called Alchemistry. Now, I have never messed with this mod before in my life. So this is going to be kind of a test. So I'm going to go ahead and look up ice. And as you can see, we can make ice with water in the compactor. Now, in order to get the water, we have to have the atomizer. And the atomizer is what I'm about to make now. I've already made the compactor. It's a pretty easy recipe. The hardest thing is pistons for it. But the atomizer, let's go ahead and see what it takes. What's the combiner? No, we don't want that. We want this. So let's look at the atomizer. Atomizer. So it's going to take some cauldrons, two more pistons, uh, hopefully... We should be good on that front and atomizer. Okay, now this is going to take some FE per tick in order to make, but let's give it a shot. So let's start with, uh, I probably want to turn this guy actually. Do I have, I don't have my wrench on me. Where is my wrench? I think it's over in this chest here. Uh, yes, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna turn this guy and then we're just going to pipe in some energy and let's see, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, let's see what we can get done here. So let's do atomizer and then let's do compactor. Okay, now let's grab some energy pipes, which I believe are both over here. And let's see how this actually works. I'm a bit nervous. I've never done this before. So we're gonna see, uh, boom, boom. And then where's my pipe wrench? Boom, okay. Now, does this have power? It does, it does indeed. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get water into this atomizer. And the way that I'm gonna try and do that is with the cooking from Blockhead's kitchen sink. I already have one made up over here from when I was making clay earlier. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I will just pick up these fluid pipes as well because we will need them. So I'm going to head right over here. And basically what a sink is, is just an infinite water source in a single block. So pretty simple to understand there. So go ahead and put the, is that going to be a problem? Uh, let's just disconnect that for now. Okay. Now let's grab this pipe wrench and let's hit this side. So it's extracting, uh, don't need it connecting there if I can help it. There we go. And now let's see, do I have water going into here? I have lava. Okay, what if I pick up and place this back down? Is that gonna get rid of the lava? 
Yes. Okay. Now we have water. And are we going to get water out of this? Yes. 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 Perfect. Okay. Now, can I... Can I move this automatically over to this guy? Probably so. But I may have to... I may have to pipe it. I may have to pipe it. Let me grab an item pipe. Alrighty, so go ahead and put the item pipe on and let's see what we got here. We have water. We have power. And we're not getting ice though. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Alright, let's see. Let's go ahead and look up ice. It says that it's just 16 water. Makes an ice. Oh! Oh, hey! I... I did it! I did... I did the thing! <laughs> okay. That... That is very strange. That is extraordinarily strange. So the only way to get this thing to actually work and create ice is to use JEI. So just enough items. This over here on the side. If we go ahead and click the ice and we hit this plus button here that says move items then it sets the target up here for the compactor and then it goes ahead and makes ice that is an interesting use of jei i actually like it i mean it's it's kind of confusing if you've never done it before but i mean i was able to figure it out eventually and hey i got ice <laughs> that that is much easier than trying to get Silk Touch at the moment. Alrighty, so this should be easy enough. We just need to make ourselves a machine frame. And then we need to make ourselves the Blast Chiller. Okay, now this should be our gateway into making Obsidian. All I have to do is place this guy down here. And hopefully it is indeed accepting RF. Nice. Now... Can I get it to, I think I have to configure the input. Let's see, configuration, let's input on this side. There we go, lava is filling up. We are chilling and hopefully we will get obsidian right here. It's pretty slow, it's pretty slow, I'll admit, but it can just be left alone, right? It can just be left here and it can slowly, passively, Make a subsidian. Absolutely perfect. All right. Now let's just do a spruce drawer and we can configure this as an output and it should output right into here theoretically. Now I do think we can get some augmentation upgrades to speed this thing up in the future, but I just want to make sure that this does output. It does not. Okay. So we may have to come out with an actual pipe in order to get it to go into the spruce drawer. I don't think the spruce drawer will actually pull. So let's see if we do, this mod is called functional storage. Uh, let's see. Ah, we do have a puller upgrade. Uh, ooh, deep slate. I don't know that I can. Oh, it's just stone. It'll, it'll take stone. Okay, let's make one of those real quick. Okay, so all I had to do was set this as an output and then also have a puller upgrade here, pulling from the west. And there we go. That is 13 obsidian already. And I can just leave this guy to run and slowly over time, we will get a lot of obsidian that we can use to make void upgrades for all of these drawers over here. Oh, absolutely perfect. I just need to let this thing run. Uh, for a good little while. Alrighty, so all of my storage drawers now have a void upgrade on them, so no more overflow issues. Absolutely perfect. On to the next task for today, and the last task for today. The Nether. And I'm hoping that things aren't too terrible in here, because uh, I actually just need one thing, and that is a mushroom. So hopefully... Oh, oh, the nether's a void too. That's not good. Well, that didn't go quite as I intended to be honest with you. So maybe, maybe we try another dimension. Maybe we try another dimension because the nether, that doesn't seem like a fun time. I thought that I was going to have like a normal nether, but 
Apparently not. So I tell you what, let's try the Twilight Forest instead. I don't think that it's going to be the void. At least, at least I hope not. <laughs> That's going to be really bad if this is a void world as well, because I I really need something. I need something to where I can get mushrooms. That's kind of a bottleneck for me right now. Uh, let's see. We just need one diamond for that portal. And we should just toss it in and bada bing, bada boom. Everything's burning. <laughs> Okay, well, that's that's not really what I wanted. Is it going to burn up all of my flowers? Okay, it stopped. We're good. I also took a lot of damage there. That could have been my first death. <laughs> okay, the Twilight Forest. The Twilight Forest is another dimension that is available in this mod pack, but it's a little bit more dangerous, so I may actually go and make some diamond armor real quick and maybe a diamond sword as well, just so that we have something just in case we get into trouble. Alrighty, so into the Twilight Forest we go. Hopefully we have a decent enough spawn. Oh, I thought I just fell through the world. <laughs> oh, that scared the fire out of me. And check this out, mushrooms right here. Now, I don't know if these mushrooms will give me, no. No, they will not. Okay, so I'm not even going to worry about those. Oh, hi there. There's an enemy. There's an enemy thing. Hi. I don't like you. I don't like you already, but you're dead. Nice. Okay, I need... Oh, that is a baby spider. Th that's a baby spider and a skeleton. Uh-oh. 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 Hi. Hi. You're going to die. <laughs> oh, please, just mushrooms. That would be... That would be amazing. Just some of these things and... Oh, it's so pretty. Man, the Twilight Forest has gotten an upgrade since the last time I played in it. Okay, stay focused, killer. Grab mushrooms. Get out of here. So since I still don't have Silk Touch, I need a way to harvest my Celium. Because if I just break this, I'm going to get dirt back. So that is why I needed these mushrooms. Because what I can do is I can use our Metallurgic Infuser to make my Celium blocks. And if we go ahead and check this out, all we need is a little bit of mushroom juice, the fungi juice, and then a dirt block will give us one block of mycelium, which should be all that we need, to be honest with you. So let's go ahead and let's put one dirt block in there. And I think I'm only going to need one mushroom in order to do this. There we go. And we should get one mycelium block. And I can use this in order to make witch water. So all I have to do is right click on this piece of water in a barrel and that should turn this water slowly into witch water. It'll have this little purplish color to it, just like that. And now I can right click with sand and bada bing, bada boom, we got ourselves a piece of soul sand. Now this, once again, may not seem like such a big deal, but I can turn this one piece of soul sand into entire stack of soul sand. And I'm gonna do that by utilizing another new mod, Create. So all I should need to get started with Create is something like this, an encased fan over on this side, and then we'll light this piece of soul sand with a flint and steel. Then I can just throw my sand right here on that block, get myself a hand crank, and right click like crazy, and that sand is going to slowly get haunted and turn into soul sand, an entire stack of soul sand that I can then sieve for some nether quartz. Nice and easy. Now, eventually we can get a much bigger contraption that can do this much, much better than what we're doing here by hand. But this is indeed a good start. And also I just realized how, how much this takes out of my hunger, but there we go. 63 soul sand. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. And now that I have nether quartz, I should be able to make storage controllers. This is going to clean up my wiring 
by a lot. Alrighty, and after making this linking tool here, which isn't too hard of a recipe to be honest with you. By the way, in case you guys are wondering how I've been getting paper, I do have sugarcane now. I actually bought it from the market guy over there, which is a super easy thing to make and it sells you seeds and things. But before that, I was actually getting paper from doing a, uh, doing, let me show you guys. A particular trade, this sawdust trade, uh, this one right here. So if you actually hit a wood log with your hammer, you will get sawdust out of it. And then you can use sawdust in order to make paper. So just a helpful little tip to get paper early on if you don't have sugar cane. Very, very nice to have. But anyway, uh, this guy is completely linked up. Every single one of these is linked up to the drawers and everything is filtering in properly the only thing that i don't particularly like about functional storage right now is that there's no way to configure this storage controller to use like first drawer first so you know check this drawer check this drawer check this drawer if any of these drawers are empty it just kind of round robins it so right now i'm only able to have these drawers available even though they have void upgrades in them and then these, as we get additional items later on, I'll have to link them up. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of a annoyance because if I have all of them linked together, then some of this stuff will start going into these drawers over here. It's mild annoyance, but you know, it works. And just quickly checking what this guy has, a spawn egg, Bumblebee spawn egg. Huh, that's actually not a bad idea. Hold on, let me... Let me go ahead and grab two of those from you, my boy. And then let's also... Oh, that's got Silk Touch on it. That's got Silk Touch on it. Uh, hold on. Do not despawn. Do not despawn, please. I need... I need literally anything with Silk Touch on it. I don't even care. One, two, three. And as long as this guy doesn't despawn, we will have something with Silk Touch. Uh, are you kidding? Oh, no, he's still here. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, did he despawn already? You gotta be kidding me. Okay, this guy. Beautiful! That is a Silk Touch item! Oh, man! And Bumblebee. I don't even know what the Bumblebee is used for. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I think that that is a good place to wrap up for the episode. We spent most of the episode fighting to get Silk Touch. And then at the end of the episode, we got Silk Touch. But you know what? It's all about the process. And we have three sieves completely set up. And we have even more that need to be set up. So we have to set up a sieve here fairly soon for the soul sand. And getting that automated and sieved as well. So there's a lot to do still. This mod pack, we're not even close to being done with. But I do hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video. As well as if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. You guys have a great day.